A thriving space industry is what the future is made of and I'll tell you in just this one week that breathtaking pace of progress has been mind-blowing. Incredible Rockets Starbase after a previous week that was a little quieter than usual. It was actually a great time for us to finally release that deep dive video on the future of moon colonization. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St There's only one way to conclusively know for sure, and that is what this mission is all about. Falcon Heavy launched in the usual spectacular fashion. All three Falcon 9 cores strapped together, 27 engines firing in this mad display to begin this 2.2 billion mile journey over the next five years. The two side boosters 1064 and 1065 were both flying for the fourth time and they spectacularly made it all the way back for a dual touchdown at landing zone 1 and 2. Amazing scenes there, as always, just check that out. Now the reason we didn't see any more from the center core after the main engine cut off and stage separation was because this brand new booster 1079 was actually expanded. They wanted every single bit of performance out of that core. So the next big event for this mission now that it's on its way will be its Mars flyby to get that sweet gravity assist and then modify its trajectory to catch up with asteroid Psyche. After that flyby, the solar electric propulsion is the key. Keep an eye out for those Hall Effect thrusters in particular as this is the first interplanetary mission to actually use them. Even with the minuscule amounts of thrust, it all lands up over the long duration of this mission. As always, there was plenty of Starlink activity. SpaceX of course celebrated its 70th mission of the year, just a little over a week ago in this mission from Cape Canaveral. This week though, another 21 Starlin satellites launched from the west coast at Foggy Vandenberg Space Force Base. This was Booster 1063 here on its 14th flight, landing on the drone ship of course I still love you. Then another just hours before rendering this video for Group 622, back again at Space Launch Complex 40. You can see there the new crew tower rapidly being completed. The booster here had its 14th flight landing on a short fall of gravitas and this all happened just literally hours after the Psyche flight. Finally happened. NASA's Psyche mission finally got underway at 10.19 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time Friday, when the SpaceX Falcon Heavy's 27 first stage engines ignited with a thundering rush of flaming exhaust. This was definitely the biggest moment for NASA in 2023. And as per usual, SpaceX's first Falcon Heavy mission for NASA did not disappoint. The triple booster rocket ignited all 27 of its first stage Merlin engines, which produced up to 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, lofting Psyche's skywork to begin its 3.5 billion kilometer journey to its celestial namesake. A bizarre metallic space rock in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, just under two and a half minutes into launch, Falcon Heavy's side boosters cut off there. Engines, detached from the central core stage and headed back to Florida's space coast to perform simultaneous landings. Following suit about four minutes after liftoff, Falcon Heavy's core booster shut down its first stage engines and separated from the rocket's second stage, which was tasked with carrying Psyche the rest of the way to orbital escape velocity. Rather than attempting to land the core booster on one of SpaceX's autonomous drone ships in the Atlantic Ocean, Maximum fuel was allotted to ensure Psyche's nominal trajectory and the never-before-flown core was left to careen to its destructive fate in the depths of the sea. Eight minutes after liftoff plummeting, like missiles through Earth's atmosphere, Falcon Heavy's side boosters began their landing burns. While 15 seconds later, the boosters touched down at SpaceX's landing zones 1 and 2, which are several miles downrange of Pad 39A sending four successive sonic booms echoing for miles across the space coast. Because of the booster's length, the bottom of the rocket breaks the sound barrier before the top does, creating two separate sonic booms, or in this case, four for the simultaneous return of two boosters. Psyche marked the fourth launch for each of these side boosters, which will be refurbished to fly on future Falcon Heavy flights. One of those flights is among the list of several contracted for upcoming NASA missions. During a pre-launch press conference on Wednesday, October 11, Tim Dunn, Senior Launch Director for NASA's Launch Services Program, said that the side boosters flown on Psyche will be reused on a Department of Defense launch later this fall. 
and then again in 2024 on the Falcon Heavy launch of NASA's Europa Clipper mission. Psyche deployed from the Falcon Heavy's upper stage today about 62 and a half minutes after launch as planned. The first burn of Falcon Heavy's second stage ended at about eight and a half minutes after launch. A second two-minute burn occurred around 54 minutes into the flight, which was followed by spacecraft separation at one hour, two minutes, and nine seconds. Psyche will now spend about an hour unfolding and deploying its massive solar arrays which covers 74 square meters and together span the length of a tennis court. SpaceX has shared many impressive moments from the Falcon Heavy launch on X.com. Musk also congratulated NASA and SpaceX teams for successfully launching the Psyche probe to interplanetary transfer orbit. This is the beginning of a suite of amazing science missions we have coming up on Falcon Heavy, said Juliana Shaman, director of civil satellite missions at SpaceX during the briefing. G listed a GOES environmental satellite and Europa Clipper, both slated to launch next year as well as the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE for the Artemis programs. Moon Orbiting Gateway Space Station and NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, which is scheduled to launch on a Falcon Heavy sometime after that. Speaking of NASA, Bill Nelson, NASA Administrator, wrote, The mission to Psyche aboard the SpaceX Falcon Heavy isn't just a mission. It's a journey to a metal-rich asteroid. Brace yourself for the mind-blowing revelations it will bring about planetary formation and the birth of rocky planets like our beloved Earth. This has truly been a very long journey. But in the end, Falcon Heavy managed to relieve some of the pressure off of NASA. The launch took place more than a week into a three-week launch period, and in late September. NASA delayed the launch once scheduled for October 5th by a week after a review found concerns with the operating temperature of cold gas thrusters used to maneuver the spacecraft. Engineers had to revise the operating parameters of the thrusters to avoid overheating. Henry Stone, Psyche project manager at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory said on October 11th at a briefing, There would have been a potential risk of overheating the thrusters and damaging them, so it was a serious issue that we had to deal with. Changes involve a select subset of parameters to the thrusters, to the thrusters, but did not elaborate on the changes. Those changes, he said, will not affect Psyche's operations once it's at the asteroid. The adjustments affected some of the timeline margins that we already had, but will conduct the same operations when we get to the body. NASA rescheduled the launch for October 12, but postponed it another day because of poor weather. The launch period ran through October 25, with instantaneous launch windows each day. There were also many earlier problems. Psyche was originally scheduled to launch in August of 2022. However, delays in testing the flight software forced NASA to skip launch opportunities in August and October of 2022. An independent review found that those testing delays were symptoms of broader institutional issues at the JPL. While the problems with both Psyche and GPL have been corrected, they affected several NASA science missions. The launch delay, which took up 14 months, pushed back the spacecraft's arrival at the asteroid from 2026 to August of 2029. The mission's cost also increased 20% from $1 billion to $1.2 billion. Psyche's delay also affected Janus, an asteroid's small SAD mission that was to fly as a secondary payload on the launch. The delay meant that Janus could not fly its original mission to go by two pairs of binary asteroids, and the mission could not find suitable alternative targets with its revised trajectory. NASA announced in July was canceling Janus and putting the completed spacecraft into storage. The institutional issues at JPL uncovered in the independent review of Psyche's delays led NASA to delay the next Discovery class mission under development at JPL. The Venus Emissivity, Radio Science and Sardopography and Spectroscopy, or Veritas. That mission, selected in 2021, for launch in 2028 is now scheduled for launch no earlier than 2031. The Psyche delay and budget increase added stress to the overall NASA Planetary Science Program, which was already dealing with challenges, such as the Mars sample return. In the agency's fiscal year of 2024 budget request, NASA said it was postponing a aliophysics mission, the Geospace Dynamics Constellation, 
citing high budgetary requirements from other programs. Luckily, it started to finally check off some items off of its manifest. The mission will examine the asteroid with a suite of scientific instruments and determine whether the hunk of rock was the core of a baby planet that never fully formed. However, that's not the only mission for Psyche, as the probe will also carry out an important experiment, testing a futuristic laser technology for transmitting large amounts of data to and from faraway spacecraft that's called the Deep Space Optical Communications. Project, or DISOC, is expected to deliver much improved data rates with 10 to 100 times the capacity of radio communications. Radio is currently the only option for sending and receiving signals in space, but it won't be able to meet the growing data needs of long-range craft. DISOC could be a game-changer for the next generation of missions, allowing future probes to transmit high-resolution images or astronauts on Mars to send videos back home. The DSOC near-infrared laser transceiver is housed in a tube-like sunshade, sticking out of one side of the Psyche spacecraft. It's designed to send high-rate data with a 4-watt laser and to receive low-rate data from Earth with a photon-counting camera, both going through an 8.6-inch aperture telescope. Engineers will begin testing the system about 20 days after launch, but it'll just be a technology demonstration. Psyche's mission data will be relayed through traditional radio communications. DSOC will send and receive laser signals about once per week as engineers test the transmitters and detectors for the first two years or so of the spacecraft's nearly six-year trip to the asteroid. Similar technologies have been used before by European Space Agency satellites in geostationary orbit and a NASA moon orbiter. But at a distance of two to three hundred million miles, this will be the first time anything like this has been attempted farther, and I mean much, much farther than the moon. If you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up, and subscribe see you in the next video, thanks for watching. By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app, Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app, here down below.